We are at the Institute of Planetary Research um, of uh, German Aerospace Center, DLR, in Berlin. Um, DLR is the National uh, uh, Aeronautic and Space Research Center of the Federal Republic of Germany. Our institute carries out uh, and supports uh, research programs on the surface, internal structure, uh, formation and evolution of the planets and their moons, asteroids and comets. The techniques employed uh, include remote sensing and in situ measurements, investigation of uh, our targets, um, using instruments carried on uh, spacecraft or astronomical observations, or on the ground uh, uh, with modeling and uh, laboratory experiments. At the Department of Planetary Laboratories uh, um, of the Institute of Planetary Research, um, we have two laboratories, the Planetary Spectroscopy Laboratory, where we characterize the uh, surface of uh, planets uh, and uh, moons and asteroids uh, in a very wide spectral range. And we are building uh, a new laboratory that uh, will gonna analyze the sample, so the sample analysis laboratory. The Planetary Spectroscopy Laboratory, we call it uh, the lab of extremes because it offers uh, uh, a lot of extreme uh, uh, capabilities. A very wide spectral range we cover from UV, visible, near infrared, thermal infrared to the far infrared, so a very wide spectral range covering. Uh, we use uh, a lot of techniques, so we have uh, bidirectional reflectance, we have hemispherical reflectance, we have transmission and we have emissivity and we cover a very wide um, range of temperatures because uh, we can go from uh, minus 200 degrees to almost uh, 1000 degrees uh, on the sample. Hi, I'm Giulia from the Institute of Planetary Research of DLR. I work here as a postdoc researcher. At DLR, we study many planetary objects. Among them, there is Venus. Venus, among all the planets in our solar system, is the most similar to Earth in terms of size, composition, and the energy from the sun, that he receives from the sun. But for some reasons, it evolved in a completely different way. And it has now super high temperatures on the surface and a super toxic atmosphere. So what happened to Venus? In order to understand that, NASA and ESA are planning three new missions to Venus. And we are directly involved in two of them with an instrument called Venus Emissivity Mapper. The laboratory work that we perform at DLR is essential for the building of our instrument and for um, the interpretation of the data. What we do is to measure in the laboratory um, visible and near infrared spectra of Venus analogs in Venus surface condition uh, using a super powerful induction system and emissivity chamber directly connected to one of our spectrometers. Mercury is the innermost and the least explored terrestrial planet of our solar system and only two missions visit uh, Mercury, the Mariner 10 in the 70s and Messenger in orbit around Mercury between 2011 and 2015. The Messenger mission observes the surface of Mercury in the visible to near infrared domain but the spectra were flat and featureless. In 2018 the European Space Agency launched the Bebe Colombo mission to Mercury and this mission will arrive uh, at Mercury in 2025 and uh, the first spectral data will arrive in 2026. The MIRTIS instrument on board this uh, mission was built and developed here at DLR and will observe the surface of Mercury in the thermal infrared between 7 and 14 micrometers. Mercury was never observed uh, in this range of wavelengths, so it is really important to have laboratory measurements in this range of wavelengths to compare uh, potential analogues to the surface of Mercury. Due to its proximity to the Sun and its peculiar orbits, the, surface of Mer the temperature at the surface of Mercury varies uh, a lot from minus 170 degrees to more than 400 degrees. And in the lab here at PSL, we are able to reproduce this uh, thermal cycle at the surface of Mercury under the emissivity chamber. So we used uh, potential analogues of Mercury's surface, which have an exotic composition, so minerals that are re not really common on Earth, and we measure their spectrum according to uh, the temperature uh, of the surface. The sample used in the emissivity chamber are put in a steel caps and uh, the samples are very fine powder because it's the grain size of the 
potential regolith at the surface of Mercury. Several temperature sensors are located in the emissivity chamber to track the temperature of the samples and the temperature of the chamber itself. With this setup, we can investigate the spectral feature of the analogs um, with various temperatures. Last summer at DLR, we received a small uh, um, specimen, that, a small sample that was uh, brought back from Asteroid Ubu uh, with the Hayabusa 2 mission. This mission is uh, a mission from the uh, Japanese space agency, JAXA, uh, with the aim of uh, um, learning more about the formation of the solar system, how water was brought uh, to Earth, as well as how organic matter reached our planet. For doing so, they decided to collect some samples from uh, asteroid Ryugu, a carbonaceous uh, asteroid and therefore very rich in carbon, and as well as mineral containing water. And they successfully delivered the sample back to Earth and they managed to bring back about 5.4 grams of material. Uh, some of this material has been already analyzed and, uh, and therefore distributed uh, to the scientific community. We managed to receive uh, one small sample of about the three um, millimeter in diameter here at DLR. Uh, we are currently carrying out the analysis and uh, we are uh, look, doing some infrared spectroscopy on the sample. Uh, we are doing bulk infrared spectroscopy on the whole sample as well as in situ infrared spectroscopy using a micro infrared uh, instrument attachment to our uh, spectrometer. The in situ analysis are actually allowing us uh, to uh, work both with uh, uh, spectral data as well as images. So we can locate very precisely where we are looking you know, at uh, the location within the sample. And, uh, which is, uh, I mean, we look at grains, so we can actually characterize the uh, mineralogy of the different area we look at. Uh, we can see how uh, the, the morphology, the color, and how the spectra changes within the sample, and we're also looking in different ranges. We're looking from visible, uh, we're looking at visible, we're looking at infrared, as well as ultraviolet. So we are trying to do a very broad characterization. We are looking at the mineralogy at your, uh, and uh, at the type of mineralogy that there is, and therefore uh, we can see if there was the, how water was actually uh, playing the role in the history of this asteroid. And uh, we know that uh, depending on the typology of uh, minerals that formed, and therefore that we find within the sample.